Washington. The most snow that Denver has seen in three years. We're putting the world's first robot snowblower against the biggest snowstorm to hit Denver, Colorado in three years. Schools are closing, flights are being canceled, and our family is taking off for a spring break vacation in the Caribbean. On its first and biggest test ever, can this robot keep our driveway and sidewalks clear while we are over 2,500 miles away? Let's find out. All right, we got this from Yarbo. Comes in four boxes. One, two, three, four. Came on a pallet. It's quite heavy and the instructions are nice. I just scanned this right here. I'm planning on spending the weekend putting this together before the next big snowstorm. The whole thing came packaged really, really well. This is just more protection on the edges. Really good job packaging this. Check this out. This is nice. The embossed gold lettering. Okay, so you have some quick start guide, user manual. This caught my eye. Everything here is labeled nicely. I want to keep this all intact because this is probably pretty important for when I assemble this. I think I'm just supposed to push it out. Ah, it does not want to move. There it goes. This thing's heavy. Now that we've unveiled it, check this out. It's like a little tank. Okay, so apparently I need to unbox this too. This is the snowblower module. So we've got some other parts here. This is the snowblower attachment. Again, everything's nicely labeled. And something I want to point out, a lot of times when something is packaged so tight, oftentimes it's hard to take out the packaging, but they even have cutouts for you to grab onto. Oh. Oh. Now for the assembly part. All right, here's the battery. Just pop it in like this. The printed instructions are fantastic, easy to understand, and they also have a QR code which you can scan and follow the video instructions. So, I mean, it didn't take me very long to assemble this guy. And it's a good thing it didn't take too long because I've got to pack my swim trunks and we have a flight to catch. I set up the wireless charging pad on our lawn next to the driveway and this was the last video I took of the Yarbo before we left to beat the storm. Hopefully I set it up correctly and it'll be able to do its job without supervision. That's the hope. Fingers crossed. Shortly after we left, I started to worry. What if something went wrong with the Yarbo? What kind of robot master am I to leave the Yarbo unsupervised for its first ever job? It could get lost or crash into something or drive into the middle of the street. And then the snow came. And boy, did it snow. Denver getting clocked by its biggest snowstorm in three years. Up to my knees uh, in some areas. Denver Public Schools are going to be closed today. Denver International Airport's already seen lots of delays, cancellations. The worst snowstorm in three years varies parts of Denver. But I wasn't going to let those worries and that snowstorm back home ruin our vacation, so I persevered and continued to snap selfies. What gave me confidence was the quality of the materials, construction, design, packaging, and instructions of the Yarbo. With all that being top-notch, I expected the performance to be the same. So using the app all the way from the Caribbean, I remotely activated my robot snowblower and what happened next gave me goosebumps. You see, as my robot buddy came to live at 6 a.m. in the morning, he cleared the snow from my driveway for the first time while I was also trying something new for the first time called the Flow Rider, which was also pretty epic. The Yarbo was incredible, clearing the snow from my driveway that would have otherwise had most HOAs ready to file a complaint. The Yarbo powered on, autonomously clearing the snow from my driveway and front walkway as I had previously mapped out using the app connected to an antenna for GPS. No ground wires or perimeter lines needed for this setup. And while I zipped around the Dominican Republic on a moped, the Yarbo did things like an obedient Wally -E type robot. But you know that feeling when everything seems to be going too smoothly and then suddenly everything goes wrong? Well, that's what happened next. You see, using the app, I ordered the Yarbo to clear the sidewalk, but then I noticed it was struggling. So I told Yarbo to go back to its wireless charging station for a break when I noticed another problem, an auger overcurrent. And Yarbo was struggling to dock itself. Were my greatest fears becoming reality? Why couldn't the Yarbo dock? And what is auger overcurrent? And because I was all the way in the Caribbean, I couldn't see what was causing the problem. So 
I decided to manually take over driving controls of the robot using the app, and like a NASA engineer, I tried to manually dock the Mars rover myself until Andrew could stop by and take a look. Ready to charge. So we've got almost 12 inches of snow. Schools are closed. Jimmy took off for vacation. I tried to take off for the snowboarding resorts, but I got stuck. So now I'm gonna go play with the snowblower. Right here, it did pretty well. The problem was is that we didn't want to mount the charging pad to the concrete because you had to drill into the concrete. So we did it in the grass, but it got stuck trying to go back to the charge port area. And this might just be a really weird anomaly because what happened was it was raining really hard at first. And then all of a sudden it just changed to snow. As it was plowing this, the charge port got covered. Yeah, so it got buried. By the time it tried to make it back, it was buried in like eight inches of snow. So yeah, let me go ahead and get this thing charged back up, figured out, and let's get the remote control out and have some fun. So I've been charging for about two and a half hours and I'm still only at 48% from 10%. It's an eight amp charger. I would have thought that it would charge a lot faster because it's only, a, I think a 36 volt system. So just like in Jimmy Chang fashion, always wear protection. I've got my helmet on to operate the snowblower. Insta360 camera. And um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. I was a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to get up to the mountains and go snowboarding last night, but I'm having a lot of fun driving the Yarbo as a consolation prize. So I ran into another issue. The chute is getting clogged from the auger. It is really wet and heavy snow. This was really interesting snowfall this time. It rained really hard and then switched into snow. So really wet. And the other downfall is, is we don't know if it's gonna be wet or dry snow until it comes here in Colorado. So it is really struggling because of the wet snow. I'm gonna to try to switch out for the plow blade, which should work a lot better. Get it charged up a little bit more and see how this one goes. So this blade will go right on and no auger needs to be removed. And these are wear bars. So they give you some extra wear bars because these are gonna get damaged as they go through things. So I actually wish I would have put this on earlier. I thought it was gonna be a lot more work. I thought I was gonna to have to remove the auger, but I can actually just leave the auger on and just put the plow blade right in front of it. Not too hard, 10 bolts to remove and eight bolts to put it on. Man, I am actually really impressed with this plow blade. It's doing a much better job. It's actually pushing it. I thought I was gonna actually have troubles because this snow is really heavy. The plow blade is a big plus one for the Yarbo. So I've been messing around with the remote control. I did take the plow blade off. Now I'm gonna try to put it in auto mode and see how it does. It is really heavy and wet snow. I do expect the chute to get stuck, but let's just give it a whirl. Okay, that's about to start running. So one cool thing I like about it is it automatically adjusts the angle of the blade. It tries to fix itself. It tries to shoot itself out. It'll try to move around. So really interesting stuff, but this snow is super heavy. I can barely push like a foot of it before it gets too heavy for me to lift it up. So I do understand why it's struggling. So it does have its downfalls, but let me just try to do the sidewalk real quick. If I'm really close to it, it doesn't realize there's a person there and I tried to stick this in there to clean the auger and it took off the top of this. So you should pause it if you're gonna clean out the auger. It can be a dangerous situation. I'm glad it wasn't my fingers. Woo. Make sure always use protection and use the paddle cleaner, not your hands. Let's see if it will actually go home. So let me go to recharge. Let's see if it can come back. That was super interesting how it made it to its charge port. It clearing the charge pad so it was nice and clean before it docked itself. What are some things I like about it? It is really intriguing how this automatically adjusts itself. It adjusts its angles if it feels like it's getting stuck. So it's pretty smart that it doesn't just like stop and never come back. It tries to keep going for it. The other thing is it will automatically charge itself and you can set a work plan. So that is really sweet. Another huge plus is the blade. It was really easy to attach that snow plow blade 
blade so you can actually turn off the auger from spinning when you have that plow blade on there. Probably my favorite thing about it was it's like playing a video game. I had a ton of fun. I was really bummed out that I didn't get to make it up to the mountains to do some powder skiing, but I played with the powder today by messing around with that remote control and driving it all around. So let's talk about what I don't like about it. Well, number one, it does not handle heavy wet snow. Let's talk about this a little bit. In defense of the Yarbo, this snowstorm brought heavier than normal snow and a lot of it. To give you an idea, my friend said shoveling this snow felt like shoveling wet cement. It was thick and heavy. The Yarbo customer support was excellent and they helped me make a few adjustments on my settings in the app to increase the speed and power of the Yarbo and decrease the likelihood of having things get jammed up next time we get that heavy, wet snow again. I do wish there was a way for me to remotely power down my Yarbo to reduce battery drain if the robot were to ever get stranded while I'm away. And I'm not a fan of having to drill holes into my driveway cement to bolt down the docking station. For now, I'll keep the docking station pegged down in the lawn, but if I want it on my driveway in the future, Perhaps I'll look for a Velcro or double-sided tape solution. Number two is it's really expensive. For $8,000, I would expect it to auto-clean the chute so that I don't have to stick that plastic thing down there. One other thing that I wasn't a big fan of is that it will automatically detect when you're pretty close to the sides and the front. So if you're anywhere near it with the remote control trying to control it, you have to be directly behind it. I understand it's a safety feature, but that safety feature isn't 100% perfect either. When I went to go clear out the auger and the chute, I thought it was gonna auto detect me. So it stopped because it saw me coming, but when I was right next to it and I was trying to clear it out, the auger started up and actually ate the tip of that thing. But overall, man, really smart technology. I'm excited to see it with a mower attachment on it. And it's gonna be pretty intriguing to see how this can work all four seasons. If you're like me and you live in an area where there's a mow season, and a snow season, Yarbo's smart yard robot delivers on its promise of an autonomous yard maintenance future. While not without its quirks, its performance and convenience make it a game changer. Check out our full written review at FreshyCharge.com.